All right, for this video, I'll be working through the level three 2019 mechanics exam. So for this exam, you'll need highlighter, ruler, and a pen, obviously. Um, right, question one. Uh, Ali and Chris rollerblading, assume friction is negligible. System of Ali and Chris can be considered an isolated system in the horizontal direction. State any relevant physical quantities conserved during collision between Chris and Ali. Um, so this is just a momentum question, so it's just momentum, um, momentum. In the answer schedule, it's got like linear momentum. Um, if you just say momentum, it's implied that it's linear. Um, if you say momentum and it's meant to be angular momentum, then you're wrong because if you were, if it's asking for angular momentum, you need to state specifically angular momentum. Total energy would probably be conserved, um, but I never really put that down because it's always a bit of a misdemeanor. Because um, it'd be like, like I don't know, back sound waves and they would dissipate off out in the space. So momentum's probably the best one. Yeah, maybe total energy, but I'd be a bit suspicious of that. Um, right. At one instant, Ellie stops Chris, stops and Chris collides with her. They move off to the and move off at right angles to each other, as shown in the diagram below. Show that Ellie's speed after the collision is 1.71 meters per second. Um, right. So the best way to like go around this, like solve this question, um, is with vectors. Vectors is pretty much the easiest way to do it. Um, so we have initially. Oh, I'll try and check it about here-ish. And I'm not really going to, oh, I'll try to do this to scale actually, ish to scale, not exactly the scale. This is the initial, yeah, P, it's meant to be really like a lowercase p, but whatever, um, initial of Chris, um, C-H-R-I-S, um, and that should be equal to the final momentum. So this, this here should be equal to Chris and Ali combined, um, because initially, all the momentum in the system was this, so finally all the momentum in the system should be that. So this should add together to create these two. Um, so we can see that if we go up Chris's final momentum, so we're going to go up Chris's final momentum, um, and that's also a vector. Um, we is, so this is going to be what we'll call this P final Chris, a bit messy, but whatever, that's just what I'm like. Um, and Ali's momentum is 90 degrees, so we're gonna have a 90 degree angle here. Yeah, and then they should add together to, to equal the initial momentum. So this is, and that's a 90 degree angle there, and this is P final of uh, Ali. Um, right, and just remember P initial of Ali was zero. Um, there we go. Um, so we can see that we have a right angle triangle, we're just gonna use a little bit of Pythagoras, and we can say that, Momentum initial of Chris squared is going to be equal to uh, momentum final of Chris squared plus uh, momentum final of Ali squared. There we go. Um, and then all we need to do is we'll rearrange. So we're going to have, we're trying to find, it's asking us to find the, the speed of Ali. So in order to find the speed of Ali, we need to find our momentum. And then we get our momentum divided by mass, and then we get her velocity um, or speed interchangeable. Um, right, so momentum final of Ali is going to be equal to the square root. Let's just rearrange Pythagoras. The uh, hypotenuse, which is pi Chris um, squared minus um, p final. Chris squared, there we go. And then all we need to do is substitute in the numbers. Um, and that equals square root. Um, initially, Chris was going 1.8 meters per second. He is, how heavy is Chris? 60 kilograms ish. They look like grown up people in the photo. And they def that dude does definitely does not look 60 kilo. Whatever. Um, squared minus. Uh, Ellie, which is going to be what? 1.1, check bracket in there, times 60 bracket squared, um, and that is equal to 85.48 kilogram meters per second, negative one. Sweet as, and now we need to go P Ellie, so momentum of final Ellie 
is equal to mass times velocity. This should be a lowercase a, uh, p, but it's just because I need to do big subscripts so you can see in the video. Um, in other words, the velocity of Ali is equal to the momentum of Ali, final Ali, over the mass of Ali. I don't really need to put Ali in every single one. And that equals 1.709 meters per second, negative one. Um, and then we're gonna round to three SF, which equals 1.71 meters per second. There we go. Right, next question. Shuffle that down a bit. To save himself from falling, Chris sees a horizontal bar, grabs it, he then swings on the bar in a vertical circle. Um, Chris's motion can be simplified by analysis of the motion center is mass, which is nice, which is 0.7 meters from the bar. Assume the effects of the friction are negligible. Calculate the minimum speed Chris's center of mass would need to have at the top of the vertical circle in order to swing up over the bar. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's basically saying, um, I'm gonna write at the top, um, the center pointing force is equal to the gravitational force. I'll put FC equals FG, but oh, I've written it, um, the center pointing force, because that's what it is, is equal to gravitational force in order for it to go around in a circle. In other words, MV squared over R equals MG, and we can see that the G's, uh, the masses cancel out, divide, divide both sides by M, so we get V squared equals RG. In other words, V equals square root RG. Um, that equals square root 0 0.7 times 9.81. And that is 2.62 meters per second. Normally, uh, normally kids, all my students just memorize this formula. Um, but that's the derivation. Um, and I can guarantee you'll be a free body diagram out over the page. Hey, look at that. It is. Describe and explain the size and direction of the tension and weight forces. At the bottom of the top positions, assuming Chris's weight swings over at the minimum speed, include labelled forces on the diagram below to support your answer. Right. So I need to get my ruler and I need to do my free body diagram first. I'm going to do the labelled forces. So at the top, it's going the minimum speed in order for it to Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone a little to the side. If you ever did this, you should have gone a little to the side. Although the examiners would probably, or the markers would probably be able to see that you've got pen there. Um, and this is going to be FG, because that's gravitational force. Um, also, and I'll measure that. I'll grab my ruler, and we'll say if that's 1.2, it needs to be exactly 1.2 down the bottom, because the weight force won't change. FG, and now the tension force is going to have to be bigger than 1.2, so we'll make it about 1.8. There we go, and that should be, and this is gonna be FT. Um, there we go, so the, this is the free beta diagram. Why have I like done what I've done? Right, so at the top, anyway, there always needs to be a net force point towards the center of the circle, because it's spinning. It says that it's spinning, so that must be the case. Always, FG just points down. If, if the ball was here, yeah, FG would point it down here, and if the ball was over here, is it? No, if Chris was over here, his gravitational force always points downwards. So at the bottom, it's still, Chris still needs to go in a circle, so he needs to provide a tension force that not over, not only, I should say, makes him go in a circle, but also overcomes gravity. So his tension force needs to be bigger than gravity. Um, right, so I'll pause it, write out the big explanation, um, and then explain it. Right, so I've said the weight force Weight force's size is always mg, mass times gravity. Um, so it remains constant. Its direction is always down. Yeah, gravity always acts down, you know, not really big news. Um, the tension force at the bottom points upwards and is larger than the weight force as the tension must accelerate Chris upwards. Yeah, that's because he's going in a circle. So the tension must make him accelerate upwards because at the bottom, he's changing direction from going down to now going up. Um, the last bullet point I've said, the tension force at the top at the top is zero as Chris is at the minimum speed, so the weight force is now the center pointing force, and I'll put in brackets FC. Um, I, not despise, but I rarely use centripetal force when teaching students um, about centripetal force, otherwise that's all they talk about, and they never realize that centripetal force is just a name of a force. So in this case, it's the tension force, which is center pointing. Um, it comes under the branch of forces, 
called centripetal forces because it's a center pointing force. Um, but if you just said, instead of saying tension, if you just said the centripetal force, you'd run into a whole lot of problems. Um, yep.